Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Crafting with Cardboard. I'm Mr. Waxman and I'm going to be showing you how to make some fun easy crafts while we're all staying home. Last week, we did another great turnout for our weekly Zoom meetings. Friends showed up to draw, show off their artwork, their sports trophies, and even their pets. So remember to come to our next weekly Zoom meeting uh, every Wednesday from 2.30 to 3 and from 3 to 3.30 uh, to see your friends and have a little bit of fun with art. Now, this week, uh, in, our, in our Zoom meeting, we're going to be doing a drawing, and in this video, we're going to be making a craft of something that you guys have been learning about in your online classes. Birds! Uh, as well as something else that flies, but that'll be a little bit of a surprise. Um, but before we jump into that, I wanted to talk to you guys about um, something a little bit serious that birds are often used to uh, represent or symbolize, and that is freedom. Freedom is basically just means uh, the right of any human being to live their life without uh, other people stopping them from eating, breathing, talking, um, and just being, you know, a human being. Um, now you may have seen on the news or online or on TV that a lot of people are very angry right now, myself included, because black and brown people don't have the freedoms in America that they deserve. Um, they don't have the freedom to feel safe because of who they are and what they look like. And they don't have the freedom to say that they don't feel safe or that they're angry or mad without getting into trouble. This is not okay, and this is wrong. So, on Sunday, uh, thousands of people, myself and, and uh, Sam and, and some of my other friends included, walked through the streets of Boston uh, holding signs to say that we didn't think this was fair and that we wanted it to change. Um, we were there to stand together and to say that Black Lives Matter. This is called a protest. And even though it may have seemed big and loud, that's actually a good thing because it means that a lot of people care very, very strongly um, about making sure that everybody is treated the same way and that everybody has freedom and equality and fairness. Um, now, you might have a lot of questions or some very strong feelings, some very big feelings about this, and that is natural. Those feelings are valid and real, which means that you are allowed to have them. Um, so if you do, find an adult that you trust, talk to them about it, and know that you're not alone. Okay, like I said before, today we're going to be making some birds, and we're going to be using some toilet paper tubes, so they're going to look something like this, okay? Let's get started. For this project, you're going to need some toilet paper tubes, some regular cardboard, scissors, glue, and something to draw and decorate with. I'm going to be using crayons for both. Okay, so to make a bird, kind of like the example one I have here, what we're basically going to be doing is taking a simple uh, toilet paper tube, which hopefully you guys should all have at home. You can also use uh, paper towel rolls, obviously. Um, and we're going to just be uh, adding in some wings, some legs, eyes, and a beak. And then afterwards, you can add whatever details you want. I imagine you guys have been learning about lots of different kinds of birds, so you can add whatever features they have. So for instance, if you're doing a robin, you can add like a little red belly by coloring that in. Um, if you're doing like a rooster or something, you can add like that little gobble that they have under their chin or on the top of their head. Um, I made a cockatoo, so I made it all white, and I added a little, um, I think this is called a plume of feathers on the top, uh, and hopefully I'll have time to show you guys some of those little details. So let's get started. So first things first, you're gonna take your cardboard and your toilet paper tube, and we're going to draw and cut out our wings, okay? So the basic shape of a wing is, uh, usually I'll just do one long line, I'm gonna do two, so two long lines. And the basic shape of a wing is kind of like this kind of curved arch, right? So it looks um, one long side, one short line, one long line, one short line, and then kind of a curve, kind of connecting them. And to make it look a little bit feathery, I'm gonna add some lumps, okay? All right, now I'm gonna cut this out. Now, I am using I'm using some thick cardboard. It is a little bit harder to cut, but it is gonna make your bird a little bit sturdier and easier to make. So if you have cereal box cardboard, that's fine too. But uh, if you can find some thicker stuff, it's, it's gonna be a little bit better. All right, now that I have my two wings, um, you can color either side, that's fine, it doesn't really matter. Uh, now I have my two wings, I'm going to cut 
cut, um, I'm not gonna glue them on, I'm actually going to cut some little slits, which means some like thin holes uh, to stick these through, okay? So take your toilet paper roll and smush it down. Don't, you know, you don't have to fold it super hard, but make sure it's, it's mostly flat. And then what we're going to do is draw some lines that are the same length as the wings, okay? right along the edge, so that should be on the edge of each other paper roll, and then we're going to cut some slits. So right along that line, we're going to cut just the tiniest bit of cardboard off the edge so that we have something, a hole to stick these wings into, okay? As you can see, it's a very small, very thin amount. When I open it up, it's just a little bit of a line, okay? And the same thing on the other side. All right, um, now you might have to adjust a little bit, but if you cut yours the right length, these should just kind of slide right in. You can kind of push it a little bit. Okay, there's one wing. Two wings, looks like you got one brown and one white. That is just all right by me. Um, also, you can feel free to color these in later. I'm not gonna do it now just for the, to save time, but um, obviously you should probably be coloring your bird in. Got all these colors, I can do it with later. Um, and next I'm gonna do the eyes and the beak, which are pretty easy. Uh, we're just going to get a piece of paper and we are going to draw some eyes and draw a beak and cut them out. Uh, so beak, I just do a simple triangle. You can get a little creative. Uh, if your bird has a different shaped beak, that's fine. Draw an orange triangle and two circles for eyes, with little dots in the middle. Maybe my bird is kind of tired or annoyed, so we can have some eyelids. All right, uh, now I'm gonna cut these out. All right, got my wonky little eyes. Oops, shouldn't crumble that up, we can use that for something else. Got my wonky little eyes and my beak. Uh, and now, as you might have guessed, here's where the glue comes in. Just a little dot of glue. You can also use a glue stick or some, some double tape or whatever if you want. I'm gonna put my beak on first. This is gonna look a little bit cartoony, and that's okay. It's gonna be kind of a funny looking bird. All right, now he's got his face, um, or she and now I'm gonna give them some legs, okay? So I'm just gonna take a little strip of leftover cardboard um, and I'm gonna cut out two strips of cardboard. And when I say strip, I mean a very thin, kind of long piece like this, okay? And you don't even have to measure this or, or draw it out, Just you can just cut them, all right? These are gonna be his legs, or hers. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take about a centimeter on each side, on each side, side, and bend it up, okay? Like one, one of these is gonna be his feet. Two, the other one is going to secure it to the inside of our bird's body, okay? So you have, they don't have to be perfect. One, two, okay? And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some glue on the inside edge of one of these little, these little feet, and then I'm going to glue it to the inside like this, okay? So that it, it will kind of stick out. Um, so why don't just do both of them at the same time? So a little bit of glue on each, on the inside of each little foot. Okay. And then they go inside the bird and then you kind of hold it against, against this piece right here. Okay. And uh, as per usual with glue, we're gonna hold this for a little while. Let's wait, um, I don't know, 30 seconds. I'll speed it up for you guys, but I'm gonna wait about 30 seconds. Okay, that should do it. Um, I was holding it very tight. Uh, they might fall off because they're not super dry yet, but that should be enough. Um, and that's basically the bird. Um, like I said, you can add whatever details you want. I encourage you guys to get creative with it and to kind of come up with your own ideas. Um, but my, I think the best idea is to pick a bird and try to make it look like that. So like I said, this one's a cockatoo and that's why I gave it this little plume that I folded. Um, this one is starting to look like an owl, so I might give it those some like little points because owls kind of have these pointy little ear looking things. Um, you might add something to the wings or make give it a special beak or whatever, but that's basically it. You get a funny little bird 
a uh, funny little bird friend. Made it a uh, toilet paper and cardboard. Easy peasy. Now let's go see what Sam is up to in the workshop. Hey Sam. Hey David. How's it going? It's going good. Uh, so today upstairs we were making some birds mm -hmm. and also talking about uh, freedom and the Black Lives Matter protest that we attended on Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, and so my question for you today was what role does art play in protests and, uh, and that kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, art can play a big role in protests. I mean, what, what art does, it's most like base function is that it makes us feel something. It makes us feel emotions. It makes us feel a certain way. It makes us um, understand things in a way that um, we couldn't understand or see them before. Um, so art is a great way to help with protests, to help spread your message because, you know, words are great, you know, you can put words on signs for your message, totally. conversations, conversations are great, but um, artwork can really help people understand a message by giving them a visual representation of what you're talking about. Yeah, like yesterday I believe we saw a few paintings of George Floyd's face mm -hmm. and a few other people um, who, were, who were some victims. Yeah. So yeah, you can um, find a lot of different ways to represent your message through different forms of art. Um, throughout history, there's been um, a big movement of people using art um, for their causes. It was a big thing in World War I. Definitely. There was a, uh, a movement called Constructivism, which was an art movement that um, was used to make propaganda, which is basically, propaganda is something that um, spreads a very specific message. Right, it's like an advertisement. Yeah, exactly. Cool, well, uh, we'll take a look at some of those. Uh, but that's great, yeah, and we'll also, also show them the picture of our protest signs that we made as well. Great. Cool, well, thanks. No problem. All right. Always good to hear from Sam and learn a little bit about the professional art world and uh, more specifically today to learn about how we can use art as a form of protest and as a way to communicate the message of the Black Lives Matter movement like we were talking about before. Um, so moving on, we were making some birds earlier today, um, so we are also going to make something else that flies. Uh, something that I made in an episode a little bit earlier uh, that I wasn't able to include in the video, so you'll notice we went some different clothes, um, and that is paper airplanes. So let's get started. Okay, to make a classic paper airplane, take a regular piece of paper, and your first step is to fold it in half lengthwise, okay? Um, sometimes when I was in school, when we would talk about folding paper, we would talk about it um, like this. We would say the when you fold it, um, Widthwise, so that it's it's a little more squarish. Uh, that's called the hamburger fold because it looks kind of like a hamburger bun, right? Because it's kind of like wider, like a hamburger bun. And then when we fold it the long way, we would call it hot dog style because it looks kind of like a hot dog bun because it's all long. Um, so you're gonna fold it hot dog style. Make sure that your corners are nice and lined up. You really want to be, you know, just like always, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you want to be as precise as you can. Make sure the lines and the corners are nice and lined up, and then fold this edge down, okay? Step two, open it up, so you can see that line right down the middle, and you're going to take these two top corners and fold them down into the middle like this, okay? I'm gonna do them one at a time, so I can be nice and careful. I'm gonna fold it right to that line. And do the same thing on this side. Fold it all the way down. Okay, so now I have my point. It is starting to look a little bit like an airplane. Um, next, so I have, as you can see, I've got this angle here, um, and then it goes straight down here. What I'm going to do next is fold it so that I have a straight angle going almost all the way down to that corner, okay? So I'm gonna take this, this, length right here, this uh, side, and also fold that into the middle, okay? Just like I did before. Make sure, again, that this line right here is lining up with that, that middle line, okay? So I'm gonna fold it down, make sure those are lined up, and then do the same thing on the other side. Remember this side lining up with that middle line. Nice and careful, okay. Okay, so next, 
I'm going to put it together, fold it right down that middle line, just like I did before, okay? Then lie it down flat, make sure these folds are nice and strong. You really wanna push down with your fingers and kinda of slide along that fold, that crease, to make sure it's nice and strong. And now I'm going to, I have the basic shape down, and now I'm going to fold down the wings so that it has something to, to glide on the air with, okay? So I'm gonna take this side, and you can fold it down as much as you want. If you want a little wing, like this, you can do that, um, but I prefer, kind of a little wing, um, but I prefer a nice big wide wing so that it can really glide pretty far. So I'm gonna fold this down kind of at an angle so that when I open it up, I've got a wing right here and a little kind of handle at the bottom. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna try to fold it down as the same at the same angle that I folded the other wing down with. Line those sides up, fold it, and then when I open it up, I've got my wings. See, nice big wings, and kind of my, my handle at the bottom, okay? If you want, you can put a little bit of tape here, or even a paper clip if you have any right here to give the, the nose or the front of the plane a little bit of extra weight, and that'll make it um, hopefully fly a little further. You can also kind of fold it down like this, uh, but even if you don't do any of that, it should, it should fly pretty well on its own. Okay, so that is the classic airplane. Okay, now I'm gonna test out my airplanes. Here we go. You don't wanna throw them too hard. Make sure you're throwing them straight though. Not bad. Nice. Now we're gonna see who can throw their paper airplane the furthest. First up, Candace. Not too bad. Next up, David. Looks like we got a winner. All right, guys. Thanks for stopping by for another episode of Crafting with Cardboard. Remember to stay safe, stay creative, and know that I love you, that I care about you, and that I miss you all. All right. See you next time.